Hi, my name is Damien Flynn, Infrastructure Architect and System Center MVP for Cloud and Data Center. Welcome back to our second recording in the Foundation Layering series for System Center 2012. In this recording, we're going to focus on the installation of our support component, the SQL 2008 R2 server. This joins the rest of our stack, which we began in the first video, implementing and defining what is our lab domain. Over the course of this video, we are going to walk through the installation, and to get started, we begin with our domain controller, preparing for the service accounts needed for this environment. So, without further ado, let's log on to our new lab domain controller, and as you can see, I have already created a number of organization units to keep things organized, and I'm going to begin by creating a service account for my SQL Server itself, which in this scenario I'm calling SVC SQL Server and assigning it a simple password um, that I will utilize for most of my service accounts as I deploy them in the lab. I also setting the passwords not to expire on my uh, service accounts just to uh, ensure that the lab uh, remains functional um, without me having to go back and do normal administration tasks to reset passwords every 60 days or so. I'm also creating a security group in uh, this lab for the administrators of my SQL Server, which is a group that I will assign as I implement the installation process of SQL later on. Members of this group, who I'm going to populate now, um, will have the full administration privileges on our SQL Server. As a Administrator, I'm simply just going to add in my own user account uh, initially, which we can update later on as we start doing more advanced uh, techniques. Now, moving over as far as the SQL Server itself, the pre-requirements here it includes the .NET framework and a number of features in IIS. I'm also setting the SQL collation to Latin General CP1 CIAS and um, assigning a number of hard disk partitions um, for the installation, the database and the log files. Without further ado, locate the installer and launch it. And uh, if you do not already have your .NET framework in place, uh, the installer will start that process and uh, preload those for us in the background. Once the splash screen has uh, launched, we switch over to the installation view and we can start the installation for a new SQL server. After a few moments, initial prerequisite checks will be carried out and assuming everything is correct, including memory, uh, we can click OK and proceed to the main installation. At that point, we've got our product keys to provide and our license agreements to select and of course uh, choose if we'd like to opt in to send feedback into Microsoft. The installer will then run another set of prereq checks to put in place the setup files needed to support the rest of the installation wizard and after a few moments the wizard will relaunch itself uh, with the new framework in place and run another set of validations checking everything is okay. Windows Firewall you may want to come back and take a look at it later on. I'm leaving it enabled in my environment, so as a result you will need to allow the SQL TCP ports and the TCP ports for potentially reporting and analysis services as well um, to the rest of the nodes in your lab. I'm selecting everything for installation uh, for this lab environment as I plan to use this SQL Server for pretty much all of the uh, services I deploy throughout the rest of the course. Again, the server will run a number of checks, validate everything is in good place, and if particular updates or stuff are required, and assuming everything is good, we can move forward. I'm going to select the default uh, instance name and uh, SQL installation paths and allow the installer to do uh, its uh, preparation to make sure we have disk space and at that point we can proceed and assign the service account which we created on our domain controller a few moments ago. 
I'm using the same service account for all of the services in the lab environment. And of course the password which we also set not to expire. And before we do anything else we'll take a quick check collations. This is quite important that we actually select the correct collation because most of the system center suites are quite uh, fussy against the collations they have assigned to them. Um, and in this particular case I'm uh, taking uh, SQL Latin General CP1 CIAS. Um, if you're not doing US English you may want to change that to support the particular uh, collation that suits your language stack correctly. Uh, but please read the readme documents for both operations manager and service manager uh, as both of those products rely on indexing f to work correctly based on the collations and will warn you uh, during the installation processes. Next we get the ability to um, provide some uh, account details for our SQL Server. Um, in this case I'm also enabling uh, mix mode. It's not absolutely required um, but setting a password for the SA account as a backdoor just in case things go pretty bad in my lab. Um, and of course I'm now assigning that security group we created on the domain controller a number of moments ago for the administrators of my SQL Server. As for the data directories, I'm modifying the user, the temp and the backup directories to be hosted on the actual uh, disk partitions which I provisioned a little bit earlier on as I prepared the actual host server for my SQL environment. And I'll go through and update each of those paths to where I'd ultimately like the data to be hosted. Uh, depending on your environment, if you're only using a single hard disk then the defaults will work fine. If, however, uh, you like to organize your backups and your data and your logs in separate locations, um, this is your opportunity to make those changes. Now that we have our path sorted out, um, we have uh, elected to install all components. So this time around, the analysis server. And on the analysis server, again, I'm assigning my security group administrators of SQL Server as the um, full access to the analysis environment. And again, uh, modifying the locations where I plan to store the databases, which will be used by the analysis engine. Next up is the reporting services. I'm going to uh, install this using the default uh, configurations. Um, we can always come back and fine tune this a little bit later on. And uh, as we progress to the rest of the installation wizard, uh, we can elect to uh, send our, our reporting and uh, configuration information back to Microsoft uh, before we actually run one final check to make sure that all of the prerequisites are in place and then validate the configuration summary of the choices that we have made uh, before we actually let the installer proceed with its task of configuring our new SQL server for the lab environment. Installing SQL itself can take a number of minutes. I've speeded the process up for the purpose of this particular video. Uh, however, I suggest you probably make a cup of tea while you're doing this in your live production. Okay, at this point SQL Server 2008 is now installed and we are ready to proceed to the next phases of preparation. Which, for our lab environment, means that we require to upgrade our SQL 2008 server to at least SP1 CU4. These upgrades are done in two steps, which we're going to start now, with the initial step of actually applying the SP1 update itself for our SQL Server. The, the update itself is available as a knowledge base article 2528583, that's a service pack 1 for SQL Server 2008 or 2. Okay, similar to the SQL Server installer itself, uh, we launch the update and it runs a set of uh, pre-requirement checks, except the license terms and of course the opt-ins for sending Microsoft uh, your uh, configuration information. From there, 
we get to select the modules we'd like to update. Obviously, we select select all, which is the default. Uh, it'll run a number of uh, checks to make sure that the SQL Server files are not already in use and locked. Uh, if they are, we have the ability to um, stop the SQL Server and um, then allow the update to run. Um, as you can see in the video, I have speeded up that whole process. Um, but again, uh, have a few cups or sips of short coffee as you wait for that to happen on your real environment. Repeat the same process, uh, this time for the CU4 rollup for Service Pack 1. Uh, again, a knowledge base 2633146 for SQL Server SP1. Uh, and uh, just as we did on the final or the previous uh, example, uh, except both the license agreements, uh, ensure that we are selecting to update all of the uh, components allow the installer to uh, do its uh, validation to make sure none of the files that we require to update are locked accept the uh, list of uh, modules that we're going to update and allow the uh, updater to do its work again um, and that's pretty much it um, obviously speeded up this process considerably uh, for the purposes of the video uh, just going to do one final check to make sure everything's working and uh, launch the SQL Server Management Studio for the first time on our environment and we should be prompted for the actual name of our server which I've simply called SQL 2008 or 2 and we can see that the version number is indeed uh, the correct build number for uh, SP1 CU4 and also a quick check shows me that the server collation is the collation I selected that's it. Um, SQL Server is now ready for our lab. Uh, don't forget to check the rest of the series as we get ready for uh, more of the uh, framework and foundations we need for our System Center 2012 environment. Thank you.